SCHD is one of the most popular ETFs out there, known for its high dividends and chances at great capital appreciation. SCHD just broke the dividend community's hearts with their latest news. Now, SCHD, can I just call them SCID at this point? They track the Dow Jones US Dividend 100 Index, which does change each year. The fund is constantly looking at different stock screeners and weighting requirements to get to that 100 stocks number. Now the annual reconstruction is finally complete and a total of 23 stocks got substituted out. Let's go over some of the biggest changes as well as a common misconception I keep hearing about SCHD being spread out as fake news in our community. So I'd say the biggest change is saying goodbye to Broadcom, which was nearly 5% of the fund. Broadcom has been a rocket ship up over 113% in the last year alone. But often when a dividend payer experiences big capital appreciation, that dividend just cannot keep up pace. It wasn't that long ago that Broadcom had nearly a 4% yield. Today, that number is just 1.5%. So why are we cutting major losers? Well, remember, SCHD or SCID is not actively managed, but it follows rules, one of which is that you need to be in the top 50% by dividend yield during their filtering out process. Their current smallest company is Dix, no pun intended, which has a 2% yield. So while it is sad to see Broadcom go, let's try to remember the age-old investing rule, buy low and sell high, which is certainly what happened here. Some other big deletions were Merck, which was 4.3%, ADP at 3%, Blackstone Group at 2.6%, and ITW at 2.1%. Of these, the one that I'm saddest to see go is Blackstone, which is an alternative investment company. Think about real estate and private equity. You know those guys are always super wealthy. They're paying a very fat 3.2% dividend yield, and the company was up 56% in the last year. So that's a big blow and a company I'm really sad to see leave. Now both ADP and ITW, they are both dividend aristocrats, known for increasing their dividend payments for at least 25 years. Now, I absolutely love this deletion, 3M, which represented nearly 2% of the fund. This is one that I absolutely despised being in the ETF. Unlike other companies that have done very well in recent years, 3M is down 47% in the last five years, and that juicy dividend yield of almost 6% it's looking more and more unsustainable. I'm gonna leave a full list of the 23 stocks that were dropped on the screen if you wanna pause and take a look. I'm also proud to announce that I'm an official partner of Seeking Alpha, and Seeking Alpha was used a lot in the research of this video. For a limited time, you can get Seeking Alpha Premium at a 20% discount and get a free seven day trial by clicking my affiliate link below, which also helps out a small time YouTuber like me. Now with 23 going out, that means 23 got added it in. So what are some of these big boys at the party now? Well, we'll start off with Bristol Myers Squibb, now making up 4% of the fund. This is a $100 billion market cap pharmaceutical company that's down over 20% in the last year and has a dividend yield of 4.6%. BMY currently has a hold from 15 out of 19 analysts. So the stock is down and market experts don't think it's a buy. Are we absolutely done for? Is it time to sell SCHD and go all in on Tesla? Well, there might be one silver lining and that is that there's potentially 18% upside at today's prices, meaning it gives us a chance at buying low and selling high. Other big additions to the fund include the classic confection company Hershey's Foods, Cincinnati Financial, Skywork Solutions, and CF Industry Holdings. One thing that I find absolutely hilarious is that the fund still owns Ford Mortar Company, currently the 19th biggest position at 2%. Every time I made an SCHD video last year, I had so many of you complaining in the comments about not wanting to own Ford and possibly selling out of SCHD. Yes, how dare the fund owns a company that's up nearly 50% in the last five years and has a near 5% starting dividend yield. They also brought in nearly $12 billion in EBITDA last year. What a terrible company to own. 
Yeah, please keep complaining in my comments about Ford this year too. Here's a listing of some of the biggest holdings of SCHD as of today. You can see they're pretty top heavy with the top 10 companies in this fund making up about 40% of the total holdings. Now, I've been a little bit surprised about how many videos slash articles I've read about Skid now focusing on dividend safety over dividend growth. Or other peculiar statements like the fund managers are now choosing to pick this stock in over that stock. Yeah, no, that's, that's not how SCHD works. It's actually not an actively managed fund. There's no blue suits sitting behind a curtain constantly buying and selling stocks. Instead, SCHD holdings are completely determined by an algorithm that adds and drops stocks based on fundamentals such as financial strength compared to peers, their financial ratios, dividend sustainability, etc. Again, these are all things that a good investor would look at when analyzing companies, but you get to have this passively done for you with SCHD. It's following the Dow Jones U.S. Dividend 100 Index. Again, there's some big misconception going on in this community that some sort of boogeyman is doing active trades on SCHD's holdings and using some emotion in this when it's all computer and algorithm focused. And yes, SCHD, they have trailed the overall market in the past year by almost 20 percentage points in the last year. And honestly, it may continue to underperform. The fund was never designed to beat the market. Instead, it's a way for investors to have a dividend complement ETF in their portfolio. If you love to already own dividend companies, well, SCHD makes it super easy. Where else are you going to get such a great basket of 100 stocks that get re-examined each year to make sure they're including the most desirable dividend-paying companies out there? With such a low expense ratio of 6 basis points, that's $6 for every $10,000 invested. Think about all the time, the research that's being saved by just investing in SCHD. Now, I know a lot of you love to pay huge expense ratios for funds to have tons of NAV erosion. How about Skid, which has a super low expense ratio and has returned over 352% since their inception over 12 years ago. And this includes dividends. Is SCHD's algorithm perfect? Absolutely not. There's always room for improvement. SCHD is constantly evolving each year. The SCHD of 2024 looks a lot different than the SCHD of 2014 did because the world and the markets, they're constantly changing. That's the benefit of owning a progressive ETF versus owning single stocks. It's a reliable, consistent, income-producing ETF that should continue to outpace inflation. SCHD just declared a $0.61 cent dividend. It's expected the fund will now have an average yield of 3.9%, up from its previous 3.6%, which is pretty solid since the fund doesn't own any of those juicy REITs or BDCs, which offer much more attractive yields. Now, while Skid may not keep beating the market, somebody who keeps posting monstrous returns is myself. So be sure to check out the Patreon link below to see all my weekly trades and the full $185,000 portfolio that I have in my 20s. Be sure to also join the Dividend Discord. I'm constantly posting stock market news in there, so you don't want to miss that. Leave a like for a small-time YouTuber. Let me know what you think about SCHD's changes in 2024 in the comments below. And did you know... Dissector, you are an idiot.